think I heard some Gojira being played up in here. Yeah, dude! New freaking album! Which really? we've both just heard very recently. Yep. Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about the new record from Gojira called Le Fon Sauvage, and I'm pronouncing that right. I thought so it was pronounced pronounce... Elephant Savage. Yes, it's, it's Elephant Savage. Yeah. Or Sausage, it doesn't matter. <laughs> elephant Sausage! Yes. Anyway, um, yeah. All I can have to say here as a preface is that Gojira have definitely done it again. This is the usual heavy, groovy-ass greatness that we come to expect from Gojira ever since Mar from Mars to Sirius. Don't you think? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do here, like I did with my last review of Coloss, is I'm going to do a track-by-track -track review, and this, this buddy of mine, he's going to comment on stuff as he sees fit, because yes. he's here. Yeah. And You guys might know me... Or probably not as ultimate really as our yeah. That's his. That's his YouTube name. Go subscribe to him now. <laughs> anyway, yes. Track by track review. If you want to skip it, click Andy's head. I'm gonna put an annotation on Andy's head. You can click it. Okay. So, like Coloss, this album's best best track is the very first track. Explosion. It gives you five seconds of little build-up silence. Then it explodes. Then it explodes! Yes. Yeah. It's like this from Mars to Sirius -y gigantic groove, and that's when you know, okay, they're back. They took four years, but they're back, and they're better than ever, or just as good as ever anyway. Um, this song kind of has three parts to it. The first part is a really groovy, just typical Gojira, gigantic groove riff-based kind of part. And then it goes into a section. The second check section reminds me a bit of the title track from the previous album, The Way of All Flesh, in the way that it progresses from a really heavy, dark riff section into a more ambient, kind of slow, emotional sort of thing. And then the last part, it basically goes towards the end with a repeated riff, a big, gigantic repeated riff, something they did a lot on From Mars to Sirius. And they do more of on this album than they did on the previous album, The Way of All Flesh. Um, yeah, this very quickly became one of my absolute favorite Gojira songs. Do you have anything to say about it, really fast? It explodes. <laughs> it explodes! It explodes! Listen to it, you'll hear it. Okay, next up we have the title track, which was released as the first single from this particular record, Le Fon Sauvage. Or Elephant Sausage. Elephant Sausage, yeah. Um, this showcases what seems to be a lot more prevalent on this record compared to their last records. They go a lot back to, like, if you know tablature, like, they go back to the zero, like the lowest string tremolo. That's the main riff. And this song, this whole album, a lot of different songs have like various extreme emotions in them. And this one, I kind of get the sense of despair because since this is the title track, Le Fon Sauvage, which translates to The Wild Child, it kind of covers a girl who is you know, living in urban human life and has a, a despairing desire to go back to nature from whence she came. And it's like, you can hear that in the vocals. And there's just so much despair and, um, like... Joe DePlantier's vocal style, it's very, very signature to him. He does this thing called scream singing, and it showcases, like, a crud ton of emotion. And, like, although I gotta say, on this album, it doesn't feel like his scream singing is anywhere near as strong on from, as from Mars to Sirius, which I feel is his vocal magnum opus. But anyway, nonetheless, great song. Then we come to The Axe, which is one of my lesser favorite songs on the album. I think I came across a review where someone said, it sounds kind of like Mastodon. 
I really am not hearing it. Maybe old Mastodon. Maybe a little bit of Leviathan era Mastodon. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, yeah. But still, really groovy, really Gojira-y. Not much else to say. Um, then we get to Liquid Fire, which is another big highlight of the album. Another one of the singles that was released beforehand. Really anthemic. If you look at an interview with um, Gojira... I mean, like Joe from Gojira about his own track by track review of this album, he'll tell you that this song was basically Gojira's The Four Horsemen, like for Metallica. It's their version of that because it's about the band themselves and the message they're trying to deliver to the world. And it really fits that this is a gigantically anthemic, powerful song, especially when you get to two thirds of the way through, the vocals just get really from Mars to Sirius here. And it's like huge and really melodic and powerful. And that's definitely the highlight of the song. Um, after that, we get a break. We get a break from all the insane heaviness that makes you want to headbang till you fall to the floor with the song. Where your head just falls off from all the headbanging. Yeah. It's just like... I've heard it happen before. Well, yeah. Anyway, um... <laughs> We get this song called The Wild Healer. What Gojira like to do is they take a song about a third or half of the way through, which they base on a simple melody that they come up with in the studio, and then they just build a short song around it to kind of serve as an interlude for the album. That's what this song does. And it that's basically what it does. There's nothing super special about it or anything, but it's important because it builds up to the next song. It's the calm before the storm. And that storm is Planned Obsolescence, which is another highlight of this album. Many highlights to this album. Um, this song almost explodes. Again, it explodes yeah. like Explosia does. They could have called this song Explosia, but they didn't. Or Explosia um, 2. Explosia 2. Yeah. Thick as a brick 2. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, it has that exploding riff. And then another thing that I really like about this song is the very end. I'm a bass player, and they have a fretless bass section at the very end of this song that I feel works really well to close it off. Then we get The Mouth of Kayla. And since this is Andy's favorite song on the record, you should probably talk about this one. Um... I don't know how to explain it in the same way you do because I'm not as musically. <laughs> well, just go ahead. <laughs> what do you What do you think of it? Well, uh, it just reminds me of what I really like about Gojira. How, yeah. How they're heavy but also melodic all at the same. Oh time. yeah, totally. Yeah. Because like this song, it kind of slithers along. It's heavy and constantly tremoloing with constant double bass, but it's also really dark and heavy and brooding at the same time. I feel like. It's this album's equivalent of vacuity from the last album and how heavy and groovy it is. And there's a really good riff in the middle that goes like do 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 da 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 do 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 It's really, really dark. And yeah, this is probably the most dark song on the album. And then the next song on the album is The Gift of Guilt. Crazy riff. Mm -hmm. Crazy riff. It starts out with this really aerobarous like tapping thing, but then it just goes into this crazy riff. And I feel like this is one of the most complexly structured songs on the album, even though it also goes in the sense of kind of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus structure. It still has some, manages to have some really complex structure to it, which I really like. Then we get to another really, really good song on the album. Pain is a Master. Takes a little while to build up, but then... It explodes! <laughs> it explodes! <laughs> Again! They might as well have called the album Explosia. <laughs> they might as well have called the album Explosia, because it does that a lot. It really does. My God. <laughs> and with this album, I mean, this album, this song, it's another emotion carrier. With this song, you get a feel of desperation, especially with this note that Joe sings that kind of ascends, like, ah! 
you feel like he's really desperate because like pain is his master and he's trapped by his own pain. And then we come to Born in Winter, which is probably one of my least favorites on the album for me personally. I feel like Pain is a Master took a while to build up, but a lot of, like practically the first third, almost the first half of this song is build up and I don't feel it works very well, but that's just me personally. This is my opinion. If you don't like it, whatever. Go screw yourself. Yeah, go screw yourself, man. Yeah. And then we get to... Oh god, this is probably like the most difficult to describe song on the album, which is The Fall. To me, anyway. It yeah. starts out with these... Well, I guess you can describe it like you can any other Gojira song. It's huge. It sounds humongous, especially with the drums at the beginning. And then just the vocals. They're really, really catchy throughout. Um, and it works as a good closer to the regular edition of the album, which is not what we're reviewing here if you read the title. We're reviewing something that none of the other reviewers on YouTube decided to review, and they're missing out. I'll tell you two words why. This emptiness, which I think is the best track on either special edition or normal edition of the album alike, besides Explosion, of course. It is just, it starts out with something that I wasn't expecting from Gojira, a riff that really akins back to their early days, to their Terra Incognita days, to their The Link days, which is really cool, but then it goes full on dark, the way of all flesh style melody. And that is just, it just really good. Another one of the songs on this album that instantly became one of my favorite Gojira songs. Um, did you think it's worthy of being one of your favorite Gojira songs? Yeah. Yeah, it's like really, it's really a good. A lot of Gojira songs are some of my favorite songs. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about Gojira. They have a lot of really, really, really good songs. Um, because they're a really, really, really good band. Yeah. Anyway, then we get to My Last Creation, which... We've only listened to that song once. I don't know. What did you think I mean, it, it was. It's still pretty fresh, though. Um, I thought it was pretty average. Yeah, you know? it wasn't. It was probably one of the weaker ones on the album. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it, it was just kind of, you know. Mm. <laughs> you, co you try comparing it to Mouth of Kale or Pain or. It's not explosion. terrible, really. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> but the bonus edition, it's worth the money just for this emptiness. It's a great song. Um. Yeah, now to talk about the album as a whole. One of the things I noticed on this album right away when I listened to it through my headphones was that it's not as loud or quite as loud as From Mars to Sirius and The Way of All Flesh were. But that's not necessarily too bad of a thing because the music really makes up for it. It's your typical amazing Gojira-ness. You know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But they didn't crank it up as much, which was a slight disappointment. I also feel that the production is really good, really clean. Although, at some moments, it's like the drums feel a little bit compressed to me. Like, the, the frequencies and the cymbals, for example, they sound a bit papery. But it's just a bit. It's like, if you don't have an akin that's ear to, I mean, an ear that's like attuned to certain production things, you may not even notice it. You'll be just like, Gojira, fuck yeah! Well, that's how most people are. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, Gojira! That's how you should be. Yeah. Like, if you're a Gojira fan, go out and buy this album now. What are you waiting for if you haven't? You'll love it, I guarantee. But, um... Everyone's really doing really well, but I don't feel like for any particular instrumentalist that this is the best performance they've ever given on a Gojira record. Mario did his best drum performance on The Way of All Flesh, and I Definitely, feel they're, yeah. yeah, I mean, you listen to The Art of Dying, and it's like... Sick shit. But then the guitar tone on this album... Definitely does not top for Mars to Sirius. That is one of the heaviest records ever. 
It's, it's not, up it's there. not fair to compare. To it's it. not fair to compare guitar <laughs> tones to like the god of all guitar tones, but I mean, it is really the same band. Good. I mean, they could have pulled it off again, but I mean, like, and I it's hope the they same do. Same guitar something. tone, really. It's just how it it's not through. as it's not as reverberant. Yeah, they didn't add as much reverb, but um, yeah, and I f- also feel that Joe's vocals are good on this album, but they're not as good as they could have been. But like. On From Mars to Sirius, they're just like, he has these gigantically loud and emotive, he's the most emotional on that album, and on this album, but he's more so on that album. I feel like this is their second most emotional effort, because there's really a ton of emotion on it. And it's not all angry, like it mostly was, oopsie, on From Mars to Sirius, (laughs) oopsie. (laughs) But yeah, if you're a Gojira fan, you're gonna you, love this. You're, album. you're gonna love this album. I've seen like a couple reviews online from people who are Gojira fans who didn't like this album, but they're really the minority. This is another mm-hmm. solid effort from Gojira. Not their best. Not but, their absolute best. I'd say it's worthy of about a eight point five. I'd yeah, say an eight point five. He's exactly right. That's probably what this album totally deserves because it's great, but not perfect. Yeah. And that's it. We're out. Stay metal. <laughs> Were you about to flick them off, dude? What, did it not register? Uh, I'll, I'll do this. Off. It doesn't matter. I'll just do this. <laughs> yeah.